this might be your first opportunity to create your first stored procedure. Stored procedures scare people. Don't be scared because I'm going to walk you through this nice and easy and all of a sudden you're going to realize, ooh, I know exactly when I'm going to use these stored procedures. So stay patient with me and I'm going to make sure at the end of this you really got a new asset to add to your tool chest. Now take a look at this. We're going to create procedure. I called it first procedure. Whatever you want to call it's fine. And then you will always have an open paren and closed paren even if there is nothing inside it. Then I'm going to have a begin and an end statement every single procedure I create. In between my begin and end, that's when I'll start to actually do some things. Here I'm going to insert into customer table default values and we'll run this procedure next. When you want to run a procedure, you call it. That's the key. You always call a procedure. As you can see here, we've created our procedure in step one, and we saw that just a second ago. Then we call first procedure, and once again, you will always have the open paren and close paren, and then the procedure runs, and then you can select everything from your customer table to check, and notice the first row has nothing but default values that were null. Every stored procedure has a begin and end statement, but they could have more than one begin and end statement. And any time you have a second begin and end statement, you must give it a label, a name. Take a look at this example right here. Since we're going to be doing two different things, I've on purpose put them in two different sections. Take a look at this. Here we're going to create the procedure, second procedure, open paren, close paren, and I've got my begin and my end statements. Since those are the first ones, I don't need to give them a label, but I could if I preferred to. But now I do an insert into customer table, the default values. Now I have a second section label, and now you can see my begin statement where I then say delete from customer table where customer number is null. So in a sense, I put that record in and then I deleted that record. I end second section. And of course, we always call a stored procedure and I call it. You see, when I create it, it actually compiles and then it's out there compiled. So when you call it, it's going to execute very, very quickly. One thing you must do when you create stored procedures is learn how to declare a variable. This is going to be worth its weight in gold. Here we create a declare procedure. Any name will do. Open paren, close paren. We have our begin statement, of course our end statement, and then you see me say declare bar one, that's its name, and it is a data type of an integer, and I can say I want it to default. It's actually customer 11111111. And now that I've declared that variable, I can then say delete from customer table where customer number equals colon bar one, once again referring to that variable. We compile this, it's ready to roll, of course we call it, and now it works this will also be important. I don't want you to just declare a variable, set a default, and that's the only value it ever has. Here we're going to do a little different technique. We're going to create our procedure, and then we're going to begin and end, and I'm going to say declare var1 It is an integer. Now I can come back and say set var1 equal 3131313131 semicolon, and that's the customer number I've set it to. There will be times when you will actually have to change a variable or set it or add one to it for a loop. So you make sure that you take this with you, learn how to set a variable, and you're in good shape. This lesson is brought to you by Coughing Data Warehousing. Serving the data warehousing needs of the world for 20 years. Check out CoughingDW.com for more information. Hi, this is Tom Coughing. Thank you so much for watching the video. Please hit subscribe to make sure you are kept up to date 
on all our videos.